After going on vacation last week, we wanted to check on our community garden plots. The corn is growing fast and looking great after hoeing out some of the weeds that had popped up. We're doing some side-by-side -side comparisons this year of growing our dint corn in rows, as well as the traditional mounds of a three sisters garden. We planted Potawatomi climbing lima beans to grow up the corn stalks and fix nitrogen in the soil and heirloom pumpkins from my mom's garden that will spread across the ground and provide a mulch. In addition to the Native American heirlooms, we're growing some varieties of cultural significance to Jordan's family. We were excited to see that True Love, a great seed company based out of Philly, had these Syrian kusa squash, a variety that Jordan's dad ate growing up. We planted a row of these that we'll use in the traditional way, roasted and stuffed with meat, rice, and spices. It's really important for us to grow these heirlooms so that their seeds can persist and future generations can plant them too. We're also growing chickpeas, a variety I found called Miles that is better adapted to our shorter growing season. I hope these work out well because making homegrown hummus will be such a treat. In the rest of this plot, we have more of our beloved Wapsi Valley corn, and we're doing some of the mounds here as well. Only this time, instead of the Potawatomi, we're doing a Cherokee Trail of Tears black bean and some butternut squash. An important feature of a subsistence garden is making it as low maintenance as possible, especially for us as we do it on top of our full-time jobs. Growing with these low input, self-supporting methods means that after an initial cultivation to get out any stray weeds, there is very little we have to do until harvest time other than enjoy watching them grow. We did put down a little bit of compost over our newly planted pigeon peas, and we're lucky enough to be able to get that from our Garden Resource Center. If you're in Pittsburgh, I can't recommend the Garden Resource Center enough. For a small yearly membership fee, you get access to compost, wood chips, and straw. You can borrow tools rather than having to buy them, as well as use the cover crops and soil amendments that they have on hand. It's also a really nice way to meet your fellow gardeners. If you don't live in the Pittsburgh area, your city might have one as well, or maybe consider starting one. It's such a valuable asset to building community around growing food. In our last two community garden plots, the beans are climbing quickly, going onto the trellis, and the wood chips are keeping the weeds down exactly how we wanted. Now you can probably already guess that we planted some pumpkins on the edges of the beds to spread throughout the paths, and in our other plot, the potatoes are popping up and looking great. To be honest, we're feeling a little unsure about planting wheat and oats out here. They definitely aren't as productive per square foot as corn is, but it's fun to experiment and try new things sometimes, even if it's not absolutely the most efficient way to garden. Things are looking lush and lovely in the home garden as well, and we're happy that the corn is finally past the chipmunk danger phase. So now we just have a couple more things left to plant. This amaranth is a new crop for us, at least as a grain. We've grown it before for its delicious spinach-like greens, but these ones we're going to plant six inches apart and then thin to about a foot and a half to two feet apart so that it can grow the giant protein-rich seed heads that were used by the Aztecs as one of their five main staple crops. Aside from using the leaves in stews and using the seeds to grind into a flour, you can also puff them like popcorn, and I am a sucker for a popcorn-like snack. In the backyard, it's time to make way for some new crops by taking out some of the old ones from the spring. This spinach was great and we got a lot out of it, but now that it's bolted, we're going to clip it out and replace it with cucumbers. Large mature plants like these, I like to clip them just below the soil surface. This lets the roots stay in the ground and decompose, providing some nutrients for all the soil microbiology and the new plants that are going in. All this green material makes a great addition to our compost pile. In place of the spinach, I put in some cucumber transplants for making pickles and some sesame that will hopefully go in our homegrown hummus. We also did a little harvesting. These are alto leeks, which is a good variety for overwintering in our cold area. We also harvested the scapes off of our garlic. If you grow hardneck garlic, it's important to grab these little flower stalks before they mature as leaving them will reduce the size of your finished bulbs. Luckily, they're delicious. We usually use them to make pesto and we grabbed some snap peas for a little after gardening snack. 
Our final gardening task for the weekend was checking on our honeybees. So we filled up the smoker with some old corn husks and opened it up. Last week, we finally got a glimpse of our new queen and it looks like she's been hard at work, as has the rest of the bees, since the hive is full of new honeycomb, honey, and lots of brood. Since there was a little bit of cross comb forming on some of the frames that we had to clean up anyway, we got to taste some of the bees' honey. And I just gotta say, good job, bees, because it was delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. Since they're filling up so many of the frames, we put on a new box to hold lots of honeycomb and honey for them to use throughout the rest of the year and the winter. It's been such a rewarding experience so far watching them grow, and we hope you've enjoyed following along too.